Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. We're back here at Crown Hyundai, and guess what? I have an all new trim of a very popular vehicle for model year 2024. It's this vehicle right here. What is it? It's a 2024 Hyundai Santa Cruz. This particular trim is new. It's called the XRT. But before we get into this stone blue, love this color, love the name, compact pickup truck. Let's talk about what's going on here. Hyundai, they're bringing out, of course, new SUVs, new EVs, and even refreshing their two long-standing sedans, the Elantra and the Sonata. Santa Cruz was something all new just recently, taking basically the front end of a Tucson and adding a bed to it. Now, the people at Hyundai really don't call this a pickup truck, but let's get real. It's got a bed, it's small size, and with the advent of the Ford Maverick taking up that compact truck size segment, the Santa Cruz makes sense to be there as well. Now, this is more of what we would call an El Camino. Chevrolet used to have an El Camino. It was half Chevy sedan, half pickup truck, you're kind of getting that vibe. But what's interesting is that you're getting a lot of great usability. And there's a lot of people out there that want to get a truck, but they don't like the way trucks drive. And I think this is where it's going to surprise you. So what I want to find out is if you're looking for the best new small size truck, that's what we're going to call it here. Should you go Maverick? Should you go Santa Cruz? Or maybe should you go even a little bit bigger? One of Steven's favorites, the Honda Ridgeline. Let's go ahead. Let's dive in to our Santa Cruz XRT and find out. Right off the bat, the color. At first, I thought it was performance blue, like on the Elantra N, but it's not. It's called stone blue, and I now see the differences. At the front of the business, you're going to get great LED lighting, and the way that it blends in nicely with the grill design is super clean, super modern. Working our way down, we have our little quadrant here with four projector beam style LED headlights. And I like the way they did the LED turn signal. Now, what's interesting is that the XRT replaces the SEL premium trim or SEL plus. So that's another thing to note that if you're looking for that trim, it's no longer available for model year 2024. This is it. We come across the front grille, love the dark chrome finish, especially with the Hyundai badge, nice and large. Flav of Flav, I like to pluck this off and send it to him. He would replace his clock around his neck and wear this badge nice and large. Even the way they brought the dark chrome into the middle section, and then everything else is flat black. Very smart to do that. And the way that they styled it, they definitely made it look more rugged, rugged because the XRT is supposed to be that little bit more rugged, off-road, sporty style. Now, as we rise up, the hood is the same and they did a great job. Very unique style to the body line. It actually comes up in curves and then disappears as you get towards the windshield. We come around the bend. Of course, if we have a new trim, we gotta have some new wheels and I am absolutely in love. The flat black, love the machine aluminum finish. Got a little bit of that bright orange reddish color around that center cap. And if you're wondering, well, Joe, what's the size of these wheels? 18 inch. What I'm disappointed about is that we really don't have an off-road-esque tire. I would like to see a little bit more shielding of the sidewall rather than this ornamental design. So I am gonna zonk that, but still the wheel with our particular paint job looks fantastic. Now, Hyundai going their own unique way. Of course, you have that interesting geometric flow of the design with the triangles. We actually have the little tiny Santa Cruz in the fender treatment here with the flat black. And I'm okay with the flat black. Like I said, I think that's gonna take a better beating. As we move down the side, you do have this flat black on the mirror caps that's specific to the XRT. You do get XRT running boards. My question is though, I don't know if they're really necessary. I guess they're gonna protect the frame, but if you really need to use this to get in, I guess the only thing that this would really be good for is when you have like a kayak carrier or something, and that'll allow you to 
get access up there, but kind of on the lowish side, and it actually makes the whole truck look a little lower than a standard Santa Cruz, which I'm still trying to figure that out. But those are on the XRT. You're also gonna get this flat black trim with the Santa Cruz name stamped into the side. And you already probably noticed when I open up the door, you do have flat black on the door handles and on the roof rails up top. Working our way towards the rear. This part reminds me of the first gen Ridgeline so much. Look at some pictures, Google, use the interweb. That really looks like the old school Ridgeline, but I'm really digging it on the Santa Cruz. Coming to the rear, same story like up front with the fender treatment, the wheels, and then coming around back, I like the way they did the tail lights. Really, really cool with the aero style. You do have that mixture in there of different lighting elements. We do have all wheel drive. This is an H track. That's Hyundai's all wheel drive system. And we do get the 2.5 liter turbo, which is the better of the two power plants. We got the dark chrome finish with the Hyundai badge, or I should say the Hyundai name on the handle there. And then the way that they did the XRT badge, very tasteful black. I like the way it's all blacked out with the Santa Cruz name. Looks really bold at the back. And then coming all the way down, you do get a great rear bumper area with some nice steps, the corner steps. And they really went all in with the triangle setup on this. So if you fail geometry, this one might give you a headache when you look at it, but it still definitely separates it from the Maverick and the Ridgeline. And then of course, when we open this, look at this nice soft touch. Here's something that's gonna surprise you. When have we ever seen this before? I don't know, maybe on a Ridgeline? Not as deep as the Ridgeline. So the Ridgeline has seven cubic feet of space. This is about four and a half cubic feet of space. You can use it as a cooler, just like the Ridgelines. But remember, the Ridgeline is a midsize truck. This is a compact truck. Just something to think about. But I do like the storage. I like the way you got the nice cargo net in there for the, the bed, you got all these different tie-down locations, LED lighting, and of course, you have the tonneau cover. And I love the way they give you this because it is a pain in the rear end to have to reach all the way in there. And we just pull it all the way back. Look at this, yeah, yeah. And then you throw it back there, flip it up. Look how clean that looks. And you have tie-down locations back here as well. But why don't we go ahead, it says that there's a turbocharged engine Let's see it underneath the hood of this Santa Cruz. All right, guys, we got the hood open. You do have a prop rod underneath the hood is gonna be that turbocharged power plant. So we have a 2.5 liter turbocharged inline four pumping out 281 horsepower, 311 pound feet of torque. Now here's the interesting thing. This has an eight speed dual clutch transmission. So if you're looking at the Ford Maverick and you go with the turbocharged Ford Maverick, that has an eight speed automatic. If you go with the Honda Pilot, that has a naturally aspirated V6 with a nine speed automatic. So very interesting. We have an eight speed dual clutch transmission, zero to 60 in about six seconds. Top speed is governed to 133 miles per hour. MPG is about 20 in the city, 27 on the highway. The vehicle weighs 4,132 pounds and you could tow 3,500 pounds. The sad news is, is that with the competition, especially the Ridgeline, you could tow up to 5,000 pounds. But why don't we go ahead, let's fire this up and see it roll. All right, guys, we are inside this 2024 XRT version of the Santa Cruz, new for 2024. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, I need some type of versatile vehicle with a bed. I'm liking the Santa Cruz. I'm also liking the other ones that you mentioned. How much is this XRT? Very good question. This Santa Cruz XRT has an MSRP, that almost rhymes, of $41,000. Let's see what you get for the money to the door panels. You're gonna see a lot of connection with the Tucson. So that gloss black up top is all Tucson. I am gonna to have to zonk the hard black plastic. I wish they would have done something a little bit softer, 
The good news is no gloss black and I think the door panels are gonna be very easy to clean. Down below, the door pocket is tight. Maybe one cheeseburger. You could get your onions and your extra pickle and a small fry and of course a Sprite to wash it down. Now going from the door panel to the dash, Tucson City. This is all like the Tucson. So we have that integrated 10.25 inch infotainment system. So as we come in, 10.25 infotainment system integrated. I don't like the way there's not physical buttons. You have to touch the gloss black area, which will get a ton of fingerprints. I throw it in the reverse. There's your backup camera. Does not take up all of the space. And that to me is a bit of a bummer. You can make adjustments a little bit if you need to look down if you're towing. But other than that, that's a zonk. I would like it to take up all 10.25 inches. Working our way down, you do have your dual climate control, which is nice. And then down below, you have USB-A's and a 12 volt wireless charging, which is great. Two cup holders. This is gonna control your eight speed DCT. You do have hill descent control and you can lock the center diff. This particular trim has, vent has heated seats, three stages, but no ventilated seats. Semi soft, open it up. What do we have? We have a little bit of felt lining and you could put, I would say, hmm, I would say four, maybe five Rubik's Cubes in there. So if you're traveling to the World Rubik's Cube Championship, you could keep four of your cubes, maybe five in there. Good luck, by the way, if you're gonna compete. Soft touch material on the seats, manual controls for the passenger, but I do like the nice clean style. I have eight-way adjustable for the driver, and you do have a standard size sunroof, which is nice. But why don't you come over to the business end? I wanna show you behind the wheel of this Santa Cruz. All right, guys, business time behind the wheel. Just like on the passenger side, a lot of Tucson elements in this Santa Cruz, you're gonna see it on the driver's side. Like I said, you do get the seat controls, especially that lower lumbar, really nice. I'm six feet tall, and don't think that these are small trucks, even though they call them compact. There's nothing compact about it. If you want even a little bit more room, like I said, you could step up to a Honda Ridgeline. Steering wheel, the leather all the way around, clean stitching, some silver, some gloss black. You do have paddles for the eight-speed DCT, and it is a manual tilting and telescoping wheel. And then, of course, you have that digital gauge cluster, 10.25 inch in display. Really, really nice to be able to scroll through the different information that you have. And then, of course, this one does not have the corner cameras, unfortunately. That's a nice piece of technology uh, that I wish that the XRT did have. Um, and then on top of that, you just have a nice comfortable space. But speaking of comfort, let's get into the back seat and see what your passengers are gonna experience in the Santa Cruz. All right, guys, back seat time. And it's a little bit of a mixed bag. First of all, I like how I'm low I'm sitting because I'm not even close to the headliner. Remember, I'm six feet tall, not even close to the headliner. I feel pretty good on the seating position. I don't feel so upright. I feel comfy. The door sills, excuse me, the door panel comes up so high. It's, it's actually quite safe. It feels safe in here. I feel like I'm being hugged by the Santa Cruz. Back to the seat, soft touch material. You do have plenty of room for an abacus, maybe a uh, Simon Says, maybe even like a travel size battleship game. Don't do Monopoly, that's the game of the devil. Back command center, there's no commanding going on. You have just flat black plastic, no 12 volt, no USB-C, no AC vents. That to me is a major zonk in a $41,000 vehicle. But sitting here, hard plastic, let's pull this down, not happening. You don't even have a center armrest. So if you have a younger sibling, what you're gonna have to do is, or a weaker friend, is give them a jab in the kidneys, and when they hunch over, you could use them as an armrest. So that to me is a bummer, but you do have a manual sliding rear glass window, which is nice. But why don't we go ahead, let's go for a spin and see how this Santa Cruz drives. All right, guys, we are inside this 2024 XRT trim of the Santa Cruz. And right away, you're just gonna feel, like I said, that familiar experience, especially if you've been in a new Tucson. All of this is new Tucson in this Santa Cruz. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I just wanna let you know what to expect. Going down the road, very smooth, very comfortable. And this is what I was talking about. There's a lot of people who think that they want a truck, but don't 
they're not gonna like the way a truck rides and how it drives. This drives much easier. It's smoother, it's quieter, and like I said, you got good room on the interior, but you also have that usable bed space as well. And I like with the Santa Cruz, especially this one, how it has that very configurable rear bed area, which is great as well. Visibility is wonderful. You're gonna get all the Hyundai safety technology. And then with the paddles, you could actually shift manually through the eight speed DCT. I guess the big Achilles heel for this is the 3,500 pounds towing capacity. But let's go on throttle. On right, throttle, here we go. So very smooth shifts from the DCT, and it's got plenty of get up and go. I mean, zero to 60 in almost 5.9 seconds is not too shabby for a vehicle of this type. I just think if you're looking for more truck-like features, you're probably gonna like the Maverick better. And I mean, the Maverick, what's cool about that vehicle is that if you go with a base, um, you get a hybrid setup, which is the only hybrid truck in the the whole auto industry the other thing i'm not really in love with is the digital gauge cluster i mean i don't mind the digital gauge cluster i just wish i had more of a hood covering the gauges because it kind of just looks really strange sitting there almost looks like a removable tablet which obviously it's not but the seats are comfy the ride is comfy you have great technology in here it just, it really is gonna come down to what kind of feel do you wanna have? Do you want the most modern, contemporary feel? Do you want a little bit more truck-like styling experience? I really think the Honda Ridgeline puts both together very, very well. Plus you're getting a mid-sized truck over a compact truck. So something to think about there, I guess the the one thing is, is what are you, if, how important are MPGs to you? But driving this truck in traffic is very easy, very smooth. You know where your reference points are. You got good sized mirrors. And then just having the room for your rear seat passengers as well is a heaven sent. But I'm hoping that this has been a nice, clean, crisp, clear overall review of the Santa Cruz, especially this XRT trim. We're gonna get back to Crown Hyundai and wrap this one up, so I'll see you in a nanosecond. All right, guys, been another great day here at Crown Hyundai. Definitely gotta thank Casey, the rest of the crew, getting us this 2024 XRT. I gotta do this with my arms. XRT, Santa Cruz. Let me know what you think. Are you going Santa Cruz? Are you going Ford Maverick? Or maybe you're even wanting to get the Honda Ridgeline. Let me know down in that comment section, but if you're new to the channel, you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Raised Rice family. We need to give it up to Stephen Flood, Stephen Flood Photography. He's thinking about getting a new truck. Let him know in the comment section which truck he should buy. Thank you, Stephen, for your hard work. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.